and I'm back in another episode of the Honda CX500 Moto Fugazi build. In part two, I'm going to continue tearing the bike down. One thing that caught my attention was the tank, where you can see this got some chipping paint, which is just a rattle can satin black paint. Uh, the tank is taking a little bit of a beating from the handlebars. I'm also going to look into getting all these zip tied electronics out of there. Zip ties made a lot of sense when I first did the project. It was quick and easy, but now we're going to do it the right way. And as you can see, the battery holder is also rigged in there with zip ties. Because I'm working with the smaller CX500 tank, removal is pretty easy. Simply remove the fuel line, two upper bolts, and a single bolt holding it to the frame. Then simply pull the tank off the body. Pretty simple. Ah, oh, the zip ties. What was I thinking? There's probably 50, maybe 100 here. The idea was to tuck all the electronics up underneath the old seat, keep them all hidden. What ended up happening was I basically folded all the wires together and zip tied all of the components against the frame. It actually worked pretty well, but as you can see, it's pretty ugly. So those of you who are a little more familiar with the CX might be looking at my ignition system that I'm removing right now and go, wait a minute, he's got a 79. How is it possible that he has the TI system? Well, what happened was, a few years ago, my CDI system, which is stock in the 79s, started to fail. And in searching for new parts, I just happened to come upon a free 82 with a perfectly working TI system. So I swapped the entire TI system over to this bike, including rewinding and replacing the stator. I also plan on removing my hastily made and poorly constructed turn signal and tail lamp mechanism. As you can see here, I found some sweet aftermarket turn signals and I completely butchered and welded on the old factory CX500 tail lamp. Look at that weld job. I should really pat myself on the back for that one. But hey, at least I took the time to spray paint it to prevent rusting, right? So the battery holder was a bit of an experiment. When I pulled the air box in the original battery mounting area, I reused the original battery bracket, which you see here, and simply zip tied it to the frame to hold the battery still in the center of the bike. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the starter solenoid now because I'm hoping I can relocate it somewhere else as I put the bike back together and hide it. So originally I wanted to create that exposed rear wheel look. So what I did was I modified the stock rear fender and of course attached it with about 200 zip ties. Removal was a little tricky, but with a little convincing, I was able to remove it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the airbox mounting tray as well that you see here. I don't plan on returning the battery to this location, and I don't think it's going to have any use in the future setup. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out now. I haven't really decided yet if I want to pull the harness and make any modifications to it, or if I'm even going to need to, but at least I want to get out of the way so I don't damage it. So what I'm trying to do here is get down to removing the entire rear swing arm. Because this bike has a rear drum brake, it's pretty easy to take apart. No special tools are needed. You need a 12 millimeter and a 14 millimeter wrench and pliers and a screwdriver to take out the little holding pins. So removing the rear axle isn't difficult either. Simply remove the main bolt and then tap out the axle. And I forgot to mention you've got to remove that rear pinch bolt as well. If you don't remove that, you're going to have a bad time. Okay. 
And off comes the wheel, right? Right? Eh, wrong. You see, I forgot to take any air out of the tire before moving it. So if you look closely, the tire runs into the back of the diff. So out comes some air. Much better. So I set a couple of jack stands underneath the rear trailing arm because I'm planning on removing the rear springs. You know, I'm not really sure if it's necessary or not. What I was concerned about here was putting an extra strain on the drive shaft. Uh, you know, it's not really clear to me whether or not the weight of the diff and the trailing arm hanging on the drive shaft would hurt it, but I thought it might be safer to do just in case. So the rear springs in the CX500 were criticized for being too soft for the size of the bike. So I'm hoping to remedy that situation in the upgrade. Diff seems to look pretty good. Removing the rear swing arm basically involves removing a single main bolt. So I ended up having a little bit of trouble removing the trailing arm and then I remembered, aha, there's a bolt on the drive shaft that holds the drive shaft to the output shaft on the engine. It's a little 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter bolt that's buried deep in the grease of the uh, drive shaft boot. Okay, let's remove a trailing arm. At this point it came out pretty easily. Nice. Looks pretty good. Hey, is that grease under there? I know. I'm going to put my finger in it. Oh, wait. Just realized how dumb that was. Yeah, that axle grease is really sticky. For what's worth, I think I've made quite a bit of progress in this episode. I'm not sure how far yet I want to go in the teardown, but I think there probably will be a couple more weekends of teardown before I'm ready to clean up and start putting it back together. I'm also going to do a little shopping in the meantime to determine exactly what direction I want to go with the new parts. One of the cool things about the CX500, considering its relatively new popularity, are the number of shops creating custom kits for this bike for suspensions, or to make it look like a cafe racer, or to have it, give it a bobber effect. So I'm going to be looking at some of those parts this week and next week to see if there's some pieces out there that are readily available to be added to this bike. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with all the old parts yet, but for now I'm just going to keep them with the bike until I've made a final decision. So that pretty much wraps it up for episode 2 of the CX500 build. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.